Hi, my name's Jet Kuso, and today we're finally gonna take a look at the other half of my Bakugan collection. We're gonna take a look at cool stuff, rare stuff, uncommon stuff, and just all of the stuff that I left out of the previous video. I think this is gonna be a ridiculously fun one, so stay tuned, make sure you see it all. I have probably what's widely regarded as some of the rarest Bakugan there are, so I'll be showing off a lot of those throughout the entire video, so watch the whole thing. Let's get right into it. Okay, so first thing, I need to make good on a promise that I made last video that I did not keep up. Here I have the fully assembled, my version of Max's Helios. What exactly makes it your version? Well, this isn't actually the full version that they released in a big set together, but this is all mixed and mashed up. So that was the combiner that they released in New Vestroia. And then also, I have Max's Dragonoid which was the good guy counterpart to Max's Helios. Rather than being made up entirely of spherical Bakugan like Max's Helios was, Max's Dragonoid was all trap Bakugan with only one spherical Dragonoid. So, for example, the arm, the arms turn into traps like that. The, uh, the legs, which in their full form, the legs were these little cute dogs. They fold up into these little polygonal trapped Bakugan. So I'm just gonna kind of put his uh, now disassembled form off to the side. This one is going to be a bit different in format than the previous video because now I'm showing off stuff that I really like and really care about. This case right here is my case of kind of original series Battle Brawlers Bakugan, which I am still very fond of because these are the ones that were really featured in the show that we all remember and love. Let's go, uh, Front to back, we'll alternate Darkus and Pyrus for this. Okay. Pyrus Dragonoid, the original, the classic, everyone's favorite, easily the most adorable Bakugan that they ever made. I think this is Warius. Uh, it's not Robotalian? No, that's not Robotalian. I don't have a Robotalian in B2. I'm gonna show off my B1 stuff later because it's even cuter than this stuff. Oh, can I do a Ravenoid swirl? There's Ravenoid, one of the best curving Bakugan in the original series because you can see his top half is just nothing. It's the flimsiest thing, so he... There we go. Yeah, that's why we call it a Ravenoid swirl. This one's great. Frosh, just a little frog. Now we have a freaky Bakugan that's probably going to return in the form of like, oh, what was it? Something weird, I'll put the other one on screen. It's the new Battle Planet Bakugan that's very similar to this, which is Tentaclear. He's basically a D&D &D beholder. Here we have Storm Skyrus, the evolution of Skyrus. Uh, it doesn't look like much until you pull out her giant chunky feet. Clayf. This was uh, Chan Li. This was Chan Li's Bakugan. Uh, some kind of a Buddha, Buddha-like uh, creature. Serpenoid. OG Fangzor. Quick comparison. Yeah. See? Same, same basic idea. This is some kind of a spin dragonoid. I don't think this is gonna work too well. Yeah, he didn't spin. No, this is spin ravenoid, I think. Yeah, this one's super busted. Terror Claw. This guy's cool because he has four feet. Great design. Amazing looking. I had one back in the day and I traded it away, but I recently got this one back in a trade. You know who you are. No, was I wrong about what Chan Lee's Bakugan was? Yeah, no, I'm wrong. Uh, Clave was not Chan Lee's. I'm gonna get comments about this. Clave was the Subterra, uh, like legendary Bakugan of Vestroya or something like that. Uh, Apollinaire, I might as well show him while he's out. Kind of a, just a cooler, spikier version of Dragonoid. This was my guardian back in the Battle Brawlers days. Oh, I was gonna alternate Darkus and Pyrus. Whoops. Harpus, the Harpy Bakugan. That was Kamba's guardian. Correct. I'm proud of you. I know um, more than you. Uh. This one's not wanting to work, huh? No. Oh my gosh. So a lot of these are just the magnets are really weak. Like it's rolling over the magnet. It just 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, they're old. Cyranoid. Klaus was, this was Klaus's Bakugan. I can't believe I remember this stuff. Oh my gosh. Here's a darkest, oh my gosh. <laughs> Here's a darkest Frosh. Frosh, I remember, was also one of the uh, legendary warriors of the Stroya. I'm pretty sure that's what they were called. Another sweet Ravenoid. Darkest Dragonoid. I think these translucent Dragonoids came in the same set as this uh, Darkest Apollinear, and I, uh, I don't remember what the other Dragonoid that came in this uh, Evolution Pack set was. Yes, I have the Evolution Packs. Just wait. Uh, dual Hydronoid. I like this design. This was uh, our only Hydronoid for the longest time. I'm so excited for the next Hydronoid that's going to be coming out in Battle Planet. Dual Hydronoid is for when the battle is over, but not quite done yet. <laughs> Another legendary warrior of Astroia, Exedra. The new Battle Planet Hydronoid looks a lot more like this since it has many more heads than two or three. Nilius is the current spiritual successor to traditional dual hydronoid. He looks a little bit cooler. Those heads. Yeah, because he has wings. Wings always make you look cool. Uh, yeah, this is Alpha Hydronoid, much closer to the Nilius design in a lot of ways, especially once you flip his feet out. Almost the same design. There's just one extra head on this. Um, we have some new Vestroya Bakugan in this case. Dual Elfin, not a, not a wheel variety on Dual Elfin. Check it, G power change normal Pyrus Elfin. Did it actually do a thing? Yeah, every time it opens up. This is one of my only B2 Heavy Metal Bakugan, Vulcan. Nice, sweet metal ring all the way around the outside. Makes spin rolls awesome. And if critical KOs were a thing that was allowed in uh, American Battle Brawlers, that would be great for critical KOs. And then finally, a Bakugan that I have featured in videos past, normal Pyrus Monaris. My very first Bakugan. This is where it all started, lads. She's a moth. Very warm place in my heart for Monaris. But do the children sing to summon her? Yes. Just a couple things that I forgot to put in the last video. I have a boost Ingram. This was supposed to be a special attack Bakugan. You were supposed to be able to make him like use a backspin to make him jump. I don't know, that was the same for like Skyrus. It kinda works. It kinda did it there. It kinda hops. Let's see if you can. It does, does kind of hop, hop, but not enough for it to do anything. Like, not enough for it to hop over an opponent Bakugan. And then we have trusty old Darak. Um, what's next? Oh! Let's shift gears for a second before we look at more Bakugan. Uh, I want to do this properly. So, you guys might not have seen this around. This is a uh, Japanese Bakutech battlefield. And I'm gonna open this up so I can use this for my, uh, my Bakutech rolling. Uh. <laughs> okay. This has been so long, let's figure out how this works. Oh, it's so dusty. So this battlefield has two sides to it. One is this blue side, which is uh, a foam that's very frictiony. And the other side is this plastic side, which is very non-frictiony. Let's, and they just kind of fit together like a, a little preschool playmat. Oh, that's gonna be way off the edge, oh well. Oh geez, this is so long. These barriers, which click down into place and lock the two segments together, so that it becomes one full thing. Gosh, there's so many. I might not be doing this exactly right, but... I'm just making old man noises over here. Don't mind me. Okay, it's perfect and there's nothing wrong with it. Let's look at some Baku tech. Behold! Don't mind this one, I have him held together with rubber bands. I won't be showing him off because he's broken. I feel bad about it. Uh, Bakutech ability cards actually were normal standard card size. Kind of this bizarre thick cardstock matte finish look. Bakutech, as you can see, 
It did not have monster designs. It was only the Bakugan form. And the gate cards, very, very similar. I had to do a quick reset of the table here because this table on its own is a little bit lopsided and wonky, which makes performance rolling a little bit difficult. So I put a marble slab on it so I can uh, have a nice flat rolling surface to properly demonstrate the Bakutech stuff. This is gonna be fun. I don't really know the names of any of this stuff, so we'll try doing just some, some fun rolls and, and mess around a little bit so you guys can see in general uh, some of the different stuff that Bakutech has to offer. These things are incredibly good and cool for performance, especially the darkest Bakugan were often uh, really centered around curve rolls and getting that stuff to work ridiculously well. Um, Bakutech had uh, certain pieces that you could swap out the parts on. So you had these little pieces, which were called uh, cross pieces. And these could be either metal or plastic or rubber or any kind of variety, and they plug into different parts on the Bakugan. And then other ones had feet parts that you could swap out. Usually if you put metal feet in them, they're really, really good at curving around. Uh, you can see on this Bakugan, I have both the cross and sole pieces metal. So this one is made to be really beefy for what we call a critical KO, is the term. So the mechanic was, if you can knock a Bakugan off of a card and stand your Bakugan in place, you win that gate card. I don't know if it can fly off, I think it actually has to stay on the card, because if they both fly off, then it just empties the card and both people get their Bakugan back. Didn't you use that Bakugan to do a critical KO in awesome Bakugan trick shots too? Uh, yes, it's very good at doing critical KOs. <laughs> get ready for this. Yeah! Look at him! Let's see if I get this to work. Well, I knocked it off, but I didn't get the stand. A lot of the different techniques that I use are based off of Baku tech techniques. The terms I use, like straight shoot, side spin shoot, uh, catapult shoot, the shoot terminology all comes from Baku tech. This one is ridiculous. This one, I guess this one is built for critical KOs. He's got a little hammer that punches out. You'd have to get the, the aim and magnet position perfectly right for that to really have any kind of effect. Can I just... See? <laughs> He's so sticky. Uh, a translucent dragon. I have normal feet on him, though. This dragon has metal in the tail, because I think he's supposed to be able to, to hop onto the next card. Yeah, see? <laughs> so he stood on this one, and then this piece of metal swings down and hits the ground and makes him bounce over to the next card. Oh, you also, you have to roll behind this line. There's no two card length rule. If the card is here, you can roll from there. Or if the card was here, you still have to roll from this line. You're also allowed to place cards sporadically throughout the game, so it's not the same basic two cards over and over and over again, like the American version of the game was. Yeah, see? I don't know what this guy's deal was. It has a little 100 printed on the side. I don't know if this guy has some kind of special effect or special rarity. I got this one much later. Let's put that dragon there. I can probably get this to curve shot. Yeah. If there is anything I think Spin Master could do to make Battle Planet more appealing in its modern line is take some cues from Bakutech, make the Bakugan high performance, make them solid, good quality, incorporate metal pieces into them in the same way that these did giving a lot of variety and performance and action features, that would be an amazing way to make the game a lot deeper and a lot more interesting. Because these things just feel really nice. Battle Planet is still way better than this as an actual game, but I love a lot of the mechanics that they use for these Bakugan. This is one of the only ones I know the name of because he was my favorite Baku tech, G Ganorada. This one is made to this entire middle section, throws down to land to make him more stable towards wobbling to defend specifically against critical knockouts. So, see, I can hit him with a Bakugan. He just isn't going to move, even, even close range probably. 
Yeah, he, he won't budge. It's a very, very impressive pocket bun. Hasn't he made an appearance a few times on the channel already? Yes, absolutely. No, pretty much any time I want to uh, use some some Baku Tech stuff in a video, I, I grab him and, and throw him on. He was very heavily featured in awesome Baku Gun trick shots too, because I couldn't help myself because I love him to death. He was also in Jakusa versus Kodak. Oh yeah! So I can do some critical KOs if I want to, as I move on to my second case of Baku Tech. This one is not just Baku Tech though. This case has rare items in it. Very, very cool stuff in this case. I think you're going to enjoy. Okay, if you guys don't recognize these Bakugan by sight, this stuff is gonna be fun. First, oh, I should show off. They came in these big boxes where you'd get an entire deck of, of stuff. Uh, Rise Dragon, Gus Burnin, and Nata Nagina. This one has both three darkest and some other stuff that I'm about to show off. Some more, this one only had the one, this one darkest Bakugan in it, and three that are also really, really cool. Gosh, these packages were so cool looking. These packages are a great example of how to sell products and sell starter decks because they're themed, they show the characters that use these Bakugan, they show kind of the, the advantages of the deck, of the play style. It, this is a lot closer to what normal TCGs do to promote their starter decks for their card games. This is another thing that I think Spin Master can take a big cue from. And now the stuff we're gonna take a look at is stuff that came in this wonderful, beautiful set. Let's start out with some of the remaining Baku Tech stuff. Yeah, we got a tall boy. We have a long boy. This one is built to kind of create coverage on a card. This one is basically what uh, Hydrus, I think, is very modeled after this Bakugan in a lot of ways. Here we go. Kodak made this observation. There is nothing wrong with taking cues from Baku Tech because these were good Bakugan. Aquas, Flare, Dragon. This one is fun. Gosh, the manual parts on Biotech though, sometimes it just got ridiculous with how many there were. See, one of their downsides is the amount of folding required. Yeah, before you actually get the full look. I mean, thankfully they do look pretty good without the extra folding, so it doesn't matter too much, but <laughs> Oh, this one was a promo Bakugan. <laughs> it's very light plastic, but there were like certain things you could do. You could get mail away pieces to replace all of these because it has two cross pieces, and then four soul pieces. One of the first B3s with its split personality, you might say. Oh wait, this is basically two different Bakugan that they split into two halves and swapped pieces around. Here we have the infamous blocker Bakugan with the big rubber band. I've also shown this off in a Battle Planet video. Your opponent would roll it so that it lands on the edge of the card like that, and then you try to roll your Bakugan onto the card, and you can't do it. You can't get him on, because in this game, you just take turns. So, what do you do? Well, there's only one thing to do. You gotta get your spin rolls good. He's over on the edge, I don't like that, I wanna get around that, so I gotta bring in my, my sweet spin rolls. Wolverine. Just Wolverine the Bakugan. Unreleased Nuvastroya Bakugan. Makes Elfin. The second half of the Nuvastroya TV show, all of the Guardian Bakugan evolved, and for some reason, they just didn't release these Bakugan in America. What was mm -hmm. the, what's the Ingram Evo? Master Ingram? Master Ingram. Brace yourself, I'm pretty sure this is Knight Percival. Yes! A Japanese Cyclone Bakugan. These ones were really well done. Cross Dragonoid. I love these. They actually function really, really well as far as spinning goes. Cause look at this, look at this. You, you can shut the Bakugan and then it winds as you click it shut. You don't have to force it. You don't have to get the timing perfectly right on all the closing. He just works. Then, <laughs> one of the most sought after Bakugan, Helios Mark II. 
This is the new Destroy variety of Helios Mark II. The first cyborg Bakugan to appear in the show. Just one of the coolest looking designs they've ever made. And they didn't release it in America. That's the new Vestroya version. I also have the Gundalian Invaders version, where the wings flip down, and you can add a battle gear. And then, a real gem. This is another Helios Mark II, but this one was the clear promo variety. It also comes with G-Power stickers. This one doesn't have anything printed on its stock. Uh, you have to put a sticker on it to decide what G-Power it is and uh, what attribute it is. This one I'm pretty sure is very rare. Okay, we had to pause for a second so I could look some stuff up, and I found something about these two Bakutech Bakugan that I, I commented on them being a little bit strange looking. These ones are actually kind of tougher to roll than a lot of the other ones, and I wasn't sure why that was. They seemed very different, and come in close for this. This is cool. They have the normal soul pieces, right? That you can take off and swap out. But this was actually from a another offshoot Baku Tech line called Bakugan Armor, where you can pull off the entire side arm sections. That symbol does a particular thing, has a gameplay advantage. This symbol just means you get a plus 100 G power boost. So you would put these different armor segments on the Bakugan so you could get different bonuses. Uh, this one is weird. This one now has more metal parts than the other one. So let's see how this, does it curve still? Yeah, it does. Wow, that's cool looking. And then this one, <laughs> it's, okay, this one looks really dopey looking <laughs> without the, uh, the cool arms. Uh, okay, I think that's all the Japanese stuff. Let's move away from that uh, and get this a little bit tidied up so I can move on to the last stuff that I'm going to show today. And then we'll also take a look at the final Bakugan, which is maybe one of the most sought after Bakugan of all time for good reason. This battlefield is wrong now because this stuff we're gonna look at is not Japanese. So I'm gonna take it all apart. So let's get out an old school battlefield. First we have this, which I think they put out for Gundalian Invaders. And it had all of these little side pieces which I've used extensively in Trick Shots videos. And you can use these for banking and holding your cards and whatnot. Um, but this thing is a little bit visually messy. So I am instead, going to use the very classic Baku mat. But I am going to put these on here for aesthetic reasons. Okay, this is my B1 stuff. This was the very first line of Bakugan. The first stuff to ever come into existence is these absolutely tiny little marbles. Flimsy, floppy, but I kind of love them a lot because they were closer to actual shooter marble size, which was the original idea, obviously, is that they're marbles. And just look, you can just hold a ton of them in your hands. Uh, for comparison, look at the size difference. Look how far we've come. B1 Bakugan came with a totally different look of cards. The game was totally different back then. So there were no ability cards. There were no ability cards. That's why there was actually a commercial that popped up pretty late into the Bakugan run that was like, introducing ability cards. Arm yourself with new ability cards with over a hundred special commands like G-Power Boost or Reroll. So now when you go into battle and your opponent thinks he's won, flip the game on him with an ability card. Turn the tides of battle with ability cards. Like it was some wild new thing which I guess it was. Uh, first things first, I just have a little uh, Ventusphere Ripper. Saurus. Fear Ripper. I'm gonna try to curve this Sting Lash in. Yeah! We've got, I think this is Juggernoid, as promised. Or no, Robotalion. I'm stupid. Yeah, Robotalion. And <laughs> both of my Griffins are busted. Like they just won't really stay closed at all. So that's, but that's Griffin. A personal favorite of mine that I never saw in B2. A lot of these Bakugan, I think, never even were released in B2. They were only ever in B1 form. 
uh, but that's Mantris, the uh, really the the OG Mantanoid. It was such a simpler time, wasn't it? This one is pretty rare. Oh, the magnets on these are so weak. Yeah, it's just not gonna work because they're so old. The magnets just won't grab. Siege, a Pyrosphere Ripper. They really did a lot with what little they had because they were so small you could only fit so much into them. I think I showed off the Pyrus B2 version of this, but Serpanoid. That's actually probably a better comparison to Fangzor. Also, Diamond Bakugan obviously were not a thing back then. Rather, we had Translucent Bakugan or that's either Centipoid or Wormquake. It's not Wormquake. Yeah, it's Centipoid. Yeah, Wormquake was gross looking. Uh, and then we had Pearl Bakugan. Translucent Bakugan could take on the attribute of the opponent if you wanted to. Pearl Bakugan could choose the highlighted gate card bonus rather than the one of their own attribute. We also have Darkest Pearl Dragonoid. I mean, just look how cool it is, because he doesn't really have purple on him. It's not the purple accents that they put focus into, but rather the, the black coloration. Honestly, I think the colorations were a bit too much most of the time. Uh, Baku Swap, where they would swap around the secondary and primary colors. All of the black parts are purple, and all of the purple parts are black. I actually, I have a B1 Darkest Preyus. It's supposed to have a little flywheel in there that changes the attribute, but it just doesn't have anything printed on it. A personal favorite of mine because of the side-heavy nature, Pearl Delta Dragonoid. You can see he has this heavy metal ring all around the outside. Uh, also heavy metal on uh, this darkest dual hydronoid. Then <laughs> we have a little Skyrus. I'll see if I can get this B1 Skyrus to do the jump, the backspin jump. Whoa, whoa, that works so well. Oh my gosh, that's what it's for. That actually, see the horn is floppy, so that when you do a backspin, it flings out and catches on the ground. I've demonstrated that with Boost Ingram, but it didn't really work that well because it's too heavy to really jump. There's actually a little place right there, a little raised area where I think you're supposed to put your thumb to get it to do the action. Like, like, almost like the arrows. Yeah, whoa! See that little raised area right there? That little flat part with the little arrow designs on it? Yeah, when Boost Ingram has that as well. Man, when you put your finger on that and push down, whoa! Yeah, that's just like the arrows on like a, like on a Garganoid or something. Skyrus is the OG Ultra. Absolutely! No, seriously, this is the, like, this is the first Ultra Bakugan. We also have just a normal Kidrera. Is there even a B1 regular Hydronoid? There is not a B1 regular Hydronoid, but since we're since we're talking about it, I've been putting it off far too long. Uh, we should put it off just a bit longer because there's one more B1 in there. I'm gonna show him off last. Okay. He's special. Probably the most sought after Bakugan of all time. Dragonoid Destroyer. And Dragonoid Destroyer was great because uh, it works well. Um, it's really good for the card game. It has, it has, it has missiles. I'll show off, I'll show off the real, the real, mo the real most desired box run of all time. Wow, it didn't even work. Oh gosh. <laughs> this is a sin against Bakugan. Okay, let's, I don't Normal Hydronoid. Hydronoid is a fascinating story because he was like one of the coolest Bakugan of the original series. This this freaky like flat wide head, all of these spikes and spines, ridiculously cool. And uh, for some reason it just it didn't exist when the original Battle Brawler series came out. It was only ever released later in a pack along with Dual Hydronoid and Alpha Hydronoid, which were the later evolutions. It was released in the Masquerade Evolution Pack. Really frightening and imposing, and it just, I need to look up the story about this Bakugan to see what actually happened and why it never came to existence. Once the Evolution Pack for this Bakugan came out, I mean, they were everywhere. They were in all of the stores. You could just find them in bins. They weren't that uncommon, but there were years and years and years where this Bakugan was essentially like Mew. I mean, it was totally mythical. No one knew anything about it. No one knew why it didn't exist, whether it did exist. 
uh, where you could get it, but it was only in Japan. I don't even think it was only in Japan. I think it was only ever released in this form, this one time, in this pack, in the translucent evolution colors. Way back in the day, I had this crimson pearl Darak, which I absolutely adore. I also had Delta Dragonoid and Beast Striker as my lowest G power backbone because this Beast Striker only had 320 Gs, so I could usually win on the lowest G power wins card like that. And you can see I painted them all with silver accents using a paint pen to match the Crimson and Pearl Darak because that's the kind of child that I was, and I, I don't regret it for a second, even if that hurts the value. It's totally worth it. The launcher for the B1 Bakugan. It was super cool. Okay, here, hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get it on here. Okay, hold on. Weren't these in the show? Yeah, hold on. I, I, oh man, let's just go on. Okay, there you go. Okay, so you get it on your wrist, right? And then you take it off your wrist, and you find a Bakugan, and <laughs> you put it on the table, push this button for no reason. But you I, I really like someone asked, I think, Ventus Knight if they were planning on bringing any launchers into the new game. And he just said, no. I just did a ridiculous focus shift for no reason. <laughs> it really just made the game a lot better and easier. Bakugan Brawl. I, I take you through all of this, really in the end, just to take you back to this, this Bakugan, this little pirate dragonoid, the Bakugan that started it all. Oh my gosh, this is a lot of Bakugan. Wow. I'm gonna try to count all of these up and tally them so I can get you guys an actual number on how many individual Bakugan I have. But the final thing I want to show you is this forbidden page inside my binder. We actually tried to shoot this clip once before, and as soon as I put the Page of Doom cards on screen, the camera cut off. That's not a joke. It actually turned off as soon as these were on screen. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I know these videos were ridiculously long, but I appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, if you like this video and you want to see more Bakugan stuff from me in the future, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon so that you get a notification every time I post a new video. You can also follow me on Twitter, at JetCuso, for news, updates, and anything else I want to put up there. If you have any questions about the Bakugan feature in this video, <laughs> leave them in the comments, and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. After a quick wiki search. After a quick wiki search, I'll be able to tell you anything about any of these Bakugan. My name is JetCuso, and I will see you next time. Hoop!